Today is September 23rd and it's been a little over a month since I planted these cover crops. I just want to give you guys an update on them. I'm going to put right here exactly the date that I planted them. I don't remember exactly. I got to look back in my notes. These cover crops are doing really good. Now this one is actually not the same date as these two. These two were the same date. This one was a little later. If you guys have been following, you know, because uh, you saw those videos. But this one is about ready to chop and drop. So this is the sun hemp and buckwheat uh, combo. Now the sun hemp has completely overtaken the buckwheat. But the buckwheat now, it's time to uh, chop and drop because I'm starting to get, you can see the flowers and then these little things those are the starts of the seeds, and I do not want the seeds to start producing viable seed, or, or the buckwheat will become uh, a weed for me, and I'll have to be picking it out. But this is probably doing the best, but granted, both of these, the sun hemp and the buckwheat, grow very quickly. They are an extremely fast cover crop, and um, I think buckwheat is 30, 40, 50 days, somewhere around there, before you need to chop and drop. And that's right what we're looking at. Sun hemp is a little bit longer. I am starting to get some flower uh, buds starting, but I need to chop this because the buckwheat uh, is ready. And so probably a good idea would be to sow the sun hemp first and then the buckwheat, but the sun hemp gets taller and might block out the buckwheat as well. So it might not be a good combo cover crop, especially densely planted like this. Just for me. So today I'm actually going to be chopping and dropping um, and I will bring you guys back in a later video because I'm going to cover it for a couple weeks, let that decompose, and then I can come in and start planting crops. So I'm going to show you guys that process. Uh, but let's move on to here. So this here is the southern pea, uh, black-eyed pea. There's many names for it. This is doing really well. It's definitely growing thicker and uh, right here you can see there's some starts of buds. So pretty soon we're gonna have, which I might let this go and produce seed for us. So that way I can either save the seed for next year or actually we can eat it. So Southern pea is really great for consuming. I, mean, I, I love eating black eyed peas and they're really easy to grow, uh, but they do take a little longer. I think they're right around 90 day. So that's uh, a little bit longer, but that should push me into closer to the winter. And then here, this is more of like a winter kind of thing, or at least late fall. But this is the daikon radish that I planted, and it's all growing really well. Probably, like I said, a little too densely planted, but at least it came up and it should do what I want it to do. So if you're not familiar with cover crops, basically, I just started this bed. If you guys have been watching, you know that this is the first thing I've put in, and I have a reason for that. I, I didn't plant anything uh, like a crop in these beds, with the exception of the black-eyed pea. It's, it's kind of a cross between a cover crop. You could use it as cover crop, and you can also use it as a crop to actually eat. With this, uh, I will be actually eating it, but the rest of these, not really. Okay, maybe even the daikon radish, I can pull up a couple before I kill them off. I just made these beds, and I wanted to get something in that's going to get roots down in. Let me kill this caterpillar here. Look, that's going to be bad for my crops. Okay, got a lot of butterflies here and they're spreading those caterpillars. Uh, those will be gone pretty soon. But I wanted to get something in to get the roots into the ground, kind of start incorporating uh, the mulch and the compost that I put on top uh, in with the soil. And, and build those microbes, which that's what cover crops do. Uh, really any plant can do that, but cover crops just do that exceptionally well. This is gonna help kind of kickstart these beds really well for my next crop that I'm gonna put in. And you can do this periodically. If you've got beds that have been around for a long time, you can put in cover crops to kind of rejuvenate the soil. Cover crops generally tend to add more nutrients rather than take. Uh, for instance, this sun hemp is in the legume family and it actually pulls nitrogen out of the air instead of the ground. And so all this is nitrogen now. And once I chop and drop and I drop this, that's going to be adding more nitrogen into the soil 
than it was taking out. And so you're, you're actually fertilizing by adding cover crops rather than just having to add a whole lot of nitrogen fertilizer for your next crop. This is a good way to um, rejuvenate that soil or get the soil, you know, kick-started um, in my case. And once they decompose, they also are feeding the soil biome which is all the microbes in the soil that the plants actually have a symbiotic relationship with. So that's the idea here. And boy, they have grown fast. Uh, they have grown tall and uh, on this at least because they are faster growing. This is a very fast growing, very quick to turn around uh, summer type cover crop. Again, summer type cover crop at these take a little longer. Probably should have started this just a little bit earlier because um, right now is when I should be close to harvesting. In fact, let me go show you guys some more black-eyed peas. So if you've been watching my other videos, you guys know that I've got black-eyed peas here as well. And you can see I've already got the beans. These are the beans from black-eyed peas. And this is about ready to die back. We're, we're gonna have to wait for these to dry, which means the plant's probably gonna die back themselves. And then once I can harvest the peas, then I can chop and drop here cover and do the same thing but that's what this will end up looking like we're going to get um, big bean, bean pods like this but those back there were planted way way um, earlier than these they're probably a whole three or four weeks earlier than here so they do produce quickly though uh, granted but it is a lot longer than here uh, these are also something that's going to be a little bit longer the daikon radish are probably 90 day as well they were offset maybe about two or three weeks from when I planted these, but they're coming up quickly now. And I use the radish, the daikon radish, actually to help till the soil for me. So they send roots down deep. They've got a long tap root, sometimes, you know, two foot or a foot. Um, granted, in my soil, probably they won't reach that. But you let them die, you can cut them back or just let the winter kill them and then let them decompose in the soil and that acts the same way almost as sun hemp it it adds uh carbon back into the soil it adds um nutrients back in and lets uh the microbes you know feed off of them so it's it's feeding the soil that way granted i can pull some up and eat them they they do taste great so there we go guys so again this hasn't been very long by the way in the center here i put some marigolds as well because marigolds are really good for the soil so also, one other thing, if you're not familiar with cover crops, what they can also do is keep weeds at bay. So if you're not ready to uh, plant a real crop, you can cover crop, and that will keep most of the weeds out so you're not having to go through and weed everything. If you look at the center here, okay, there's not a lot because I've been weeding, but those are some weeds coming up right now, okay? Uh, that's right in the center. Also here, you can see some open areas. There are weeds that are popping up. Not as much, but right there. You can see some weeds coming up. Also over here, there's a weed. Uh, that's a weed. So a couple because that's open. So that's one thing this doesn't do great. It doesn't really cover as well because there are open areas. It's not as dense as here. This should completely cover. Um, there's a few weeds in here and some holes, but once these really grow, grow bigger they will shadow those out but here for sure shadows everything so nothing really grows inside now there might be a couple but we're going to chop and drop everything but for the most part this just overtakes and um, the sun hemp and the buckwheat both they overtake and keep anything from growing really they are so fast at growing so you know different things uh, for each cover crop i'm testing them all out and they each have their own benefits. So like I said, this is fast growing. This is good for weed suppression. Also good for adding a lot of carbon very quickly and quick turnover. Um, these if, uh, southern peas, they're great if you live in a really hot climate, by the way. They can handle over 100 degrees just fine. Uh, they can also handle a fair amount of drought, more so than most other uh, crops. They're just, they're made for this kind of climate where I'm at, which is in Texas. South Texas here, I mean, we were getting 108 degrees a couple days in the summer. It's perfect for that. Okay, so, uh, but they do take a little longer, but the benefit is you do get a crop out of them if you want to wait. You can also, I could chop and drop right now, and they are also a legume, and they're going to add nitrogen back in the soil as well because they pull it from the atmosphere, okay? Uh, they're part of that same family. 
So that's the benefit of these. Um, if you have a little more time, highly recommend them. Uh, maybe plant a little denser if you're just going to use that as a cover crop. Uh, but I wanted to also get something out of it, so I left them in rows so they have a little more room to grow and grow me some beans. Okay, here. Uh, these are great for if you've got compacted soil because they send that tap root in and uh, I do have compacted soil so Granted those are growing great, but these are not as big and bushy as they should be because the compacted soil But over time it's brand new bed, but in the next year or two we'll see The legumes here growing much larger, but there we go So those are the three that I I tried I still got one more bed here that I'm gonna try with something else early next year I'm gonna probably come out with a video of each one of these cover crops and kind of discuss which worked better for me. Uh, the, the benefit of each, I gave a rundown really quickly here, but this will be after I harvest everything and uh, you guys can see each one that I used, which is better uh, for what, what use, you know, it depends on what you're using it for. So if you got compacted soil like me, there's all hard clay that I had to amend here in this bed. Um, you know, it just depends on what you're looking to do, okay? So you guys can kind of come along with me and figure this out as well. So watch for a video coming up in the near future. I would say about two weeks, maybe three, because I'm gonna today actually come through and cut this down, chop and drop. I'm gonna cover it for two weeks. And then after that two weeks, uh, I should be able to uncover it and see how it looks. So that way you guys can see the process of the chop and drop and how to terminate your cover crop the right way. So I'm gonna get working on that, but I really appreciate you guys coming along. I wanna show you guys kind of the process here before I start cutting back. Oh, one other thing I wanna mention, the buckwheat brings in beneficial insects. So bees love it, they love these flowers. Same with the uh, parasitic wasps, which are really good at keeping back populations of bad insects, right? The, the little caterpillars and, pillars and stuff that you see eating your, your plants. You can see there's really not much eating in here because those parasitic wasps, I, I come through here and I see a whole bunch of them usually. It's super early in the morning. They come a little bit later usually, but they'll come in and, uh, and actually attack those. So they kind of do your pest management for you, which is nice. So that's the benefit of, another benefit of a flowering one like buckwheat. Thanks for watching everyone. If you guys like this kind of content, please subscribe and hit that bell notification for future video updates, especially an update on this because you're going to see me in two weeks chopping and dropping this. Um, thanks for coming along and watching. Now you guys try to escape the daily grind.